I'm not your average kind of designer. I combine fashion with technology and create designs that are based with microcontrollers and sensors and flirt with artificial intelligence. So how does this look, you might wonder? This is one of my dresses. It's a robotic spider dress. It is based on proximity sensors in the front and mechanic limbs on the shoulders. And when you step into the personal space of this, uh, this design, it's attacking you, very literally. <laughs> because it's based on robotics, actually. So um, for me, this, this design is very much about personal space and using technology to create and to define these boundaries. One of my other dresses is a smoke dress. Um, it's also a dress equipped with sensors, and when people are in the immediate surroundings of this dress, it puts up a smoke screen, so almost is, as it's shy and it's diving away. So, with my dresses and with my designs, I do an investigation in the space that we have around us. The intimate space, the personal space, the social space, and the public space that we have around our bodies. And for me, it's interesting, while being busy with these spaces, is one thing is deferring person to person, culture to culture, but also mood to mood, because if I step out of my bed with the wrong leg, sort of, I might be a little bit more grumpy, I might want to have less people in my personal space. So, while building these dresses, I also investigate a lot, like I am researching these spaces and these interactions. One of my other dresses is a cocktail dress, but a real one, because it's really making you a cocktail by a push <laughs> of a button. <laughs> it has a peristaltic pump on the back of the design, and uh, for me, this is more of an, uh, a social design, um, as it's uh, yeah, going into the interaction and um, yeah, it's, it's serving you a drink. So for me, it's all about like researching these designs and researching this field, you know, what can you do with fashion and how can this be different? For example, how can things be uh, playful and social? How can these new technologies become a companion of you? How can they be uh, defensive or behavioral? How can they act upon your behalf? Or how can you learn something from them? Or how can they be expressive and sensitive? So how can they maybe help you emote or express yourself? And um, I have, at this moment, over 40 dresses and uh, designs and devices. And for me, they are all case studies. They are case studies on how a certain kind of technology is being placed on the body and interacts in a different way with its surroundings. For me, myself, um, I started fashion design when I was 14 years old. Um, believe it or not, I was a little bit more introvert in the past and I was uh, pretty shy. And uh, for me, I could uh, like translate my environment by uh, like looking at people, what they wore, and I could understand how they felt from the inside, sort of. And um, I thought that was really interesting. So I started with my study fashion design. For me, fashion is about um, expression, and it's about communication. And um, as I started to create designs, uh, which was really cool, I got pretty good at it, there were also something missing for me. They were analog, they were passive, and I wanted my designs to be interactive. I wanted them to react, and I wanted them to come alive. So I combined my, uh, my study at that time with my other love for robots and robotics. So I started to combine robots and fashion with each other and placing them on the body. And uh, by doing so, they were the brains and the heartbeats that my designs were missing. At the half of uh, 2000, when I was still strapping big computers to the body, which was not that sexy, um, I also found out something else as I was going through this new notion of playing around with robotics. Uh, this is Arduino. It's an open source platform board, which makes you uh, like sort of easy program the designs, or in my case, my designs, and uh, put, for example, sensors to it. And uh, yeah, that opened my world, because it was a really small piece of uh, technology, a really small platform board that I could embed into my uh, designs and create my fashion with. And uh, not only fashion, I also uh, tend to look at other things, for example, uh, creating devices. This is Agent Unicorn, and uh, it is a device that I created for children with ADHD. Uh, so basically, children that are a little bit more excited to the world than other people might be, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I do think that there's something wrong with the society at this moment. We tend to give children very early on medication, and this is a little bit a critic for me on the pharmaceutical industry, but by giving medication, 
reaction to a child, especially really young, you're numping out this child, you're numping out their emotions and their feelings. And this is really evolving this child to be a different person later in life. So what I wanted to see and what I could do was creating a device and instead of numping this child out, uh, seeing how I could create a device that the child could actually learn something from and learn how their brain works. So I created the device with a little camera and it's based on EEG. So whenever their attention is spiking, so they see something in their environment uh, that I get excited about, this unicorn horn is, um, is recording whatever happens in front of them. And basically you can get through the day with this child, whatever getting them excited, sort of, you know, and again, making them understand why things happen within their body instead of numping them out. And uh, this is for me an important project because not only like seeing how you could influence, for example, the medical world to be more playful, but also how you can step into the world of the child instead of us taking the child and putting it in a medical situation. And doing this by the notion of fashion, like using the unicorn, the notion of fantasy, and the using, yeah, using this notion of uh, creating this device um, in order to uh, yeah, take them, go on a journey with them instead of the other way. So for me, it's a little bit a story about the irony of technology allowing us to be more empathic again. I always say that technology came into our lives to help us, to help us out, sort of. But at this moment of time, technology is often a compass for stress. It's stressing us out. If I open my mobile phone, I almost get a heart attack by the amount of notifications that I get towards me, you know? So I am wondering how this can be different. How can we think of other solutions? How can we reshape this notion of technology? And um, how can we challenge the technology that we are part of our society to be a little bit more different, to be a little bit more empathic, and uh, yeah, to be a little bit more pure and honest, sort of, you know? So this is a call towards the creatives, the makers, the designers, the architects, the scientists, and the rock stars amongst us, to see how we can reshape the interfaces the next generation will grow up with onto ones that are more playful, into ones that are more social, and also ones that, more, that are more emotional too. And thank you so much.